Khadija Rehan the Kambadi Kilagat, the eldest daughter of Sultan Omar I, is considered one of the most powerful characters of the Maldivian history. Ibn Battuta, the famous traveler, visited the Maldives under her reign and was surprised to find her resigned as a sultana, as no woman can be a religious leader under Islamic convention. This fact emphasized the matriarchal nature of Maldives in the past. She became one of the most famous and memorable rulers of the country, and her name has become an iconic symbol of female empowerment in the Maldives as well. Sultan Omar lay on his deathbed, while Rehendi held his hand, clinging on to the last bit of life as it left his body. Words of strength to his beloved daughter were his last words. With every dying breath, draining his existence from the world, he held his daughter's hand with love and pride. Until it was time. A sense of rawness and vulnerability seeped through every vein in Rehendi's body as her beloved father passed away. But a younger brother, Shiabuddin, failed to understand the deep love and connection these two had. Connection missing between Shahabuddin and Sultan Omar. Shahabuddin, being one of the many firm believers of the religious view that a female cannot lead a nation, denied Rehendi her right to the throne. He stood by his decision despite his father's request for Rehendi's time in power. Rehendi begged and pleaded. Words of threat rolled out of her tongue with effortlessness and confidence. His face flushed instantaneously. His sister knew secrets about him that could drain his life. The only fear he had was to be surfaced. Rehendi continued blackmailing him as the wiser Muhammad al Jamil dragged her out of his royal chambers. Shahabuddin fled the country that very night. Thus, tales about his banishment arose following rumors of his death. In 1363, after ruling for 16 years, she wed her comrade Muhammad al Jamil. This resulted in her being deposed as the male dominated nobility thought her husband more appropriate for the position. This sparked anger in her heart, yet she suppressed this feeling for the betterment of the country as she believed then. Two years of envious glares at her husband at formal gatherings and feeling of being robbed of something that was rightfully hers could not be bottled up anymore. She felt the urge to address this matter, not by proving her point with an argument, as she knew this would be futile, but by action. She stabbed her husband where it would hurt the most, in the heart with a dagger, not once, but twice. The amount of years she had secretly resented him for stealing her legal possession this assassination was cunningly covered, and the blame was put on an innocent man. Having no reason to disbelieve the accusation, nobody bothered to investigate the case. She mourned the death of her husband in such a way that no one had the slightest clue about her true intentions. To the public eye, she was a dejected widow, grieving the loss of her beloved. In reality, her crocodile tears masked her sheer joy at becoming Sultana once more. Ten years passed since she ascended the throne. Rehendi fell in love with fellow minister Abdullah I. They were to rule the country together, but yet again her position was being usurped by her husband. This time, she wanted him to suffer. Instant death would not compensate for the mental wounds she had been enduring by being deprived from what was rightfully hers. Rehendi decided to kill Abdullah, but not like the instantaneous death she inflicted on Mohammed. She served him doses of poison in every drink, in every meal. Her true motives had behind her actions of love. Sultan Abdullah had no clue what was really happening behind their loving married life. Abdullah grew sick day by day. His body weakened. Rehendi plotted her last scheme to kill her husband. She put a double dose of poison in his drink. Abdullah realized this at the very last moment. She unveiled her true self at his very last breath. He suffered the same fate as his predecessor. Triumphant over the dead bodies of her treacherous husbands, she ruled alone. She got what she wanted. After four years of ruling peacefully over Maldives, she passes away, but not before she says a few last words to her half-sister, Radhafati, who is next in line for the throne.
We can see that Rehli Khadija did all that she could to regain her rights, but this does not change the fact that she destroyed three lives in the process. We can see such situations occurring all around the world. People are self-righteous in their actions and fail to see the other side of the story. The story of Khadija Rehli Kambadi Kilega is one such story.